the the cooking thing some people like there's some some meats for example people will assert that the bioavailability of the protein is enhanced when you cook it versus when you have it raw you're actually losing out but then on the other side of the spectrum you'd be thinking with something as nutrient dense as liver if i can retain even like all of the nutrients and not cook out any of them if there was a chance that you'd lose some of the quality like why would i take that risk you know like is there certain foods that you should cook like eggs for example with you know neutralizing the avidin component relative to meats is should you is raw like you know more ideal potentially or like what do you think on that this is such an interesting question now you know there's this guy on instagram doing this raw meat thing yeah. and this people are talking about this a lot yeah. one of the reasons that i like to eat raw liver was just this idea like okay I'm going to get all the riboflavin, all the potentially heat labile nutrients. I'm trusting the source. I've never gotten sick in my experience, my N of one from raw liver. I'll do an ounce, half an ounce a day, but that's why I do it raw. It's super easy. I don't have to cook it. I like it better and it's preserving things. You know, I think that the majority of the literature points to the fact that when you cook foods, you will sacrifice some of the nutrients, not all, but some. And when you desiccate nutrients, when you freeze dry nutrients, you're going to lose some of the nutrients, but not all. And the trade-off is what appears to be increased protein digestibility. And there's a lot of studies on this, so it's hard to really look at all of them. But I think in terms of like pig guts and these other studies that have been done, uh, Richard Rangham has talked about this in the book, Catching Fire. When you cook meat, it appears that the protein is more bioavailable for humans when you cook it. Now, Having said that, I don't really like a well-done steak. So when I'm eating a steak, it's like cooked on the outside and raw on the inside. When I eat hamburgers, yeah. they're kind of the same way. So I'm getting both. Uh, you could also do the same thing with your liver if you wanted to sear the outside and leave the inside pink. But yeah, there's always this trade-off, nutrient bioavailability, uh, at least in terms of heat labile nutrients. A lot of the B vitamins are probably denatured partially when you cook it. Vitamin C appears to be heat labile. And then protein availability and protein digestibility. You hit on a great thing with the egg whites. I would cook your egg whites because there is avidin. It does bind biotin. You, you are sort of creating this, this negative pull away from the B vitamins with the avidin and the egg white. I would cook it if you're going to eat the egg whites. Some people just for a while... Uh, when I was eating more eggs, I would just separate and just eat the yolks because I found them interesting to eat raw and enjoyable and simple. The one thing I'll say about eggs is from the data that I've seen, if you're getting an organic egg or a pasture-raised egg, if you know the quality, the incidence of the salmonella and the campylobacter on the shell is much lower. And that's where the contamination comes from. So if you crack the egg and there's contamination on the shell, if you keep the yolk membrane intact, the yolk has like a really thin membrane. And you know how you can like crack an egg, separate the white, it'll fall through your hand. The yolk will just sit in your hand. It looks really cool. It's like this little bubble. And it's just, mm -hmm. it's not surface tension. There's actually a membrane on the yolk. And if you haven't cracked the yolk with a raw egg, the risk of contamination there is extremely low because the shell didn't even really touch the yolk. So that's one thing to consider, but I would cook your whites if you wanna eat them. Does that answer some of your questions? Yeah, yeah. Like I've seen when you actually look at it from like a molecular mass level, it seems like the amount of biotin from the yolk itself relative to the avidin content of the egg white surrounding it, you could otherwise just be like netting out like zero where it's like you're not, I don't know, where it's like you or you could be at a net positive. But at the same time, like it seems like the more reasonable approach is just to ensure you've neutralized the avidin component by cooking it adequately. Yeah, at least for the white. Um, and then you'd have to go through and look how heat labile is biotin in the yolk, how much of the, uh, you know, how much of the biotin yeah. in the yolk are you going to denature when you cook it? So, yeah. and I think a lot of people could also benefit from more biotin, which is one of the kind of overarching ideas. And that's the whole reason that I got interested in, in no tail eating and these hunter gatherer cultures and eating organs or eggs, egg yolks or anything in the first place. Like are there nutrients like biotin or riboflavin or anserine or taurine or CoQ10 that we could really improve our overall nutrient status by sort of eating in a way that is apparently evolutionarily consistent? Mm. What do you think about the like peptides and growth factors that could otherwise be denatured during cooking as well? Like I know liver king, one of his claims is, well, I don't know how like strongly he believes it or if he just does it as like an insurance policy, but he eats raw because he wants to retain these like growth factors that I would I'd be skeptical that they're even bioavailable to do something 
you know, actively, whereas like typically that's like a, you know, uh, I don't know, uh, in paracrine function where you have like in intracellular concentrations of hormones being produced and just like eating it is not necessarily yielding like an active effect. So I would be skeptical that it even does anything, but I wanted to run it by you if you've looked into that at all, or if there's any viability. It's interesting. Like, so BPC-157 occurs in the stomach and the intestines, or at True. least in the juices. True. And pe people do, uh, people do eat like mon mondongo, I think is intestines. And then there's like um, all these other Latin American dishes that are intestines. I have intestines in my fridge in Costa Rica. Um, and so, and people do take BPC-157 orally. And I think it's mostly for gut issues, but who knows? I think the peptides are this wild west frontier where I, I would love to see more research on this. And we're just kind of guessing. Um, we don't really know the answer yeah. there. You're absolutely right. Like, are they bioavailable? It's a peptide. It's 50 or less amino acids canonically. Uh, you're going to put that peptide into a stomach acid, which is less a pH of, of 1.5. Like that peptide could get broken down, but it also could have effects in the stomach or sometimes they do pass through the stomach. Uh, intact. So who knows? It's very interesting. Um, I remember reading some research about collagen peptides that perhaps, and I'd have to go back and actually dig into this in detail, that some of the peptides might actually pass through the stomach and they didn't get fully degraded. So um, I, do, I do think that's an interesting hypothesis. Like maybe a little bit of raw organs every once in a while could give you some peptides that are valuable. I certainly think that the peptides in organs are fascinating. And I I don't know how this research is going to happen, Derek, because I don't know who's going to fund it. <laughs> like, yeah. But and there was a little bit in the 50s and 60s and 70s, there was a guy named Jeffrey Bland who actually did this with rats, I think, and he used spleen extract and liver extract. And there were a couple of peptides in the spleen, tuftsin, splenin, and splenopentin. And he found that when he did desiccated or raw, they did seem to affect the rats. Now, this is a 1970s study that wasn't published in Nature or Cell or Science. So yeah. who knows? But there is some of that kind of like murky research from before you or I were born. Uh, that's intriguing and it's never been repeated. The, the peptides in, in organ concentrates are kind of a, they're a black box. Like, could it be helpful for humans? Absolutely. Does it, have, could it not have any effect on us? Yeah. I think hopefully we'll get, some, I, I, I hope we get more into that in the future nutrition. Yeah.